Hello everyone, my name is Bjorn, and welcome back to Yakuza Like a Dragon. So, it looks like someone has rescued Zell. We don't know who. Who could it be that would only meet with Ichiban? Not sure, guess I just gotta go see. Hey. Sure, it will be fine, but be careful, okay? I will, I will. Kasugakun. Follow me. Yeah. So, Got it. who's the guy you wanted me to meet? An old friend of yours. He prefers to meet with you alone. Is it Arakawa? That's is it Joe Sawashiro? I don't get it. Did he rescue you? Who is it that did it? More or less. Thing is, he's with the Omni Alliance. What's his oh. name? I don't know. He wouldn't tell me. Guess I'll have to ask him myself. Is it the one that... Pretty much. Is it the one that's calling him Anarchy before? It is! It's been a while, Anarchy. <laughs> hey, it's Mitsu. Holy shit! Mitsu! You're okay! I don't know if okay is the right word. <laughs> but I seem to be doing better than you, at least. What's going on, man? I never caught up with you after I got out of prison. Have you seen Arakawa-san recently? Nah. Us peons hardly ever see him these days. So I've heard. <sighs> Not happy about that myself. Even though we're Omi Alliance now, inside, I'm still Arakawa. Uh, so you're Omi too? Yeah. I had to rescue Zhao in secret. If they find out, I'll be executed. Doesn't that mean you shouldn't be talking to me? It does. But I had to say one thing to you. I can't say much else, but you need to know. What? Arakawa-san, he's about to go all in with his next gamble. When that happens, you'll need strong allies. M more than he's already got? I can't say anymore. I'm sorry. Mitsu. Does that mean... I'll be in touch. He wants us to ally with Arakawa? Hmm. That's interesting. So what's going to happen to the Yokohama Liumang? Damn, you're going straight for the jugular, huh? Well, obviously, Mabuchi's ruined everything. The Great Wall is full of holes now. If the Omi decide to invade, it'll crumble. Yeah. Is there any hope? I don't know. But if we don't patch up the wall, it's all How over. How can we have that wall? And with me like this. Man, it hurts just looking at that. Hurts having it. That's why I'm thinking of stepping down. Huh? It doesn't matter so much who the boss of the Liu Mong is. In the end, the only thing that really matters is whether my men have a place to call home. You get it? Yeah. I know the Liu Mong origin story. Huh? Then you know why we formed in the first place. I don't know if I can keep us going anymore. I was never that great at it. I like my father. But who's the next leader gonna be if you step down? I have someone in mind. Someone who's tough, bold, friendly. Is it Zeng? What? Who? Song Hui san. Oh, so Song Hui? You'd give the love <laughs> to the Komi Jewel? Yeah, I thought it was gonna be that Zeng dude. Yeah, I know. Up to now, the two factions have been like oil and water. But the world's changing. Walls are crumbling. If we don't start banding together... Yeah, that's true. They don't have a survive. shelter, a home right uh, now. So. Not everyone will mm. accept the merger, of course. I'm and sure Leo Mang doesn't members. have, like, what? But that hasn't changed the overall leadership. situation for the Eugene 3. It's join or die. Yeah. I think I see what you're saying. Do you? You figure Song Hui will keep the Liu Mong from going extinct. Meanwhile, yeah, the Komiju exactly. will get a new home. So both your people and her people will be better off. Everyone's a big, happy family. 
Well, you don't have to put it like that exactly. Soft, sweetheart terms and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. You're a good guy with a big old. Come on, you should bond this guy? You sure? Do we really have to do this? This guy sent out assassins to Nando. BG3 do all you a lot. <laughs> I say Ryu Glan's probably singing anthems about you. Yeah, speaking of, I think I'll visit the chairman and see how grateful yeah, he really is. We haven't seen him. Sounds yet. like you plan on making a big request. But I have some idea of how this oh, fake yeah. bill ended up in your pocket. Well. There's just something I want to ask him. I think you'll be willing to talk about more secret shit now, don't you think? He should. We all owe you big time. Uh, you sure don't hesitate to cash in on favors. <laughs> <laughs> well, give my regards to him when you see him. Alright, see you later, man. There is one sub-story we can check. Step right up and see for yourself. Mm -hmm. Huh? Come on in. Animal circus? Grand animal circus? Didn't know the circus was in town. Wow. Looks like it's right here in Hamakita Park. I should check it out when I have the time. Wow, this is pretty far. Damn. Ladies Good. and gentlemen, welcome. We're gonna to fight the a bear. Here today, so Why am I here up on the stage? <laughs> Meet and greet with the animals, huh? This here is Catherine Chan the bear. Catherine Chan has gone through special training. You, Not only is she an acrobatic wonder, she was a real good girl during the movie. I he listens to me it. no matter what. And now where were we? Oh, right. Catherine Chan. What? Yes, indeed. You should definitely take the chance to meet her. So does this Catherine Chan ever go outside? Oh, no, she may be tame, but she never goes outside. Don't you worry. Her cage is... That's right. Why, this lock here... Wait. This is the lock to Catherine Chan's cage. Ah! Catherine Chan's gotten loose! You'll have to hold her down. I promise to pay you back. We can't have her... Yeah, I get that. Damn it. Is this gonna be it? You're fighting a bear. Another loser. Well... Well, you know what that, that means. We, we see a wild beast, you know, we shoot on sight. Cool. Yeah, of course she's a big fan of it. Of course she is. Oh, God, I don't like the sound. Let's use the pyro prison. That's it. So ridiculous with the sub stories, man. You should hurry back to your cage, Mr. Tuckman. Your cage. Mm. All right. Amazing. Catherine Chan went back to her cage all on her own. Is the bear going to be a pound mate? <sighs> Me and Thank you very much. You know, I don't think she was listening to you much in the... Either way, we can now... I just style. realized I hadn't formally introduced myself. Yes, though. My I'm Kasuga. Yes, though. We travel all over the... All over the... Indeed. But there are many children outside these mm. eyes. The first time I was taken to see the circus, I was overjoyed. I want to share okay. honestly, we're struggling to stay in business. But in spite of this, I aim to do nothing but my yeah. app. I got you. This doesn't feel like your I best, hope it all works out. Oh, House of Our next show is about to start soon. No, I think I'm marveled out yeah, for the day. I understand. Should just go. Yeah. They don't worry. They're they? incredibly obedient. I'll take you. All right. I think I'll head out then. I will. Thank you. They? Damn. That ringmaster said they'll be holding more shows here. Air Blues. I feel like there's more. Finally, gonna get some answers from him about that fake bill. You may enter. Thank you, Chairman Hoshino. Captain Takabe said it would be okay for us to talk. I heard. And I believe I already know why you've come. You've done us a great service. I would not still be leader of this clan if it weren't for you. Does that mean the Seiryu clan's gonna pull through? 
I can't say for sure yet. About 20 to 30% oh, of our men defected to the Omi. The ones who stayed are grumbling behind my back. And it's hard to blame them. They just found out the Jincho standoff was all a sham. Zhao told me he's giving up his position as the leader of the Liu Meng. Songhui is going to lead them. I really see their mili yes, military powers I know. falling off. <laughs> you just know everything, huh? Not everything. But I'll tell you what I do know. Eventually, the Seryu clan will succumb to the Omi Alliance. What? What? For people who had nowhere to live outside the Grey Zones, the Great Wall of Muscle was their only protection. Now it's crumbling. That's a matter of life or death for them. Already rumors are flying into Jincho's political circles. Rumors that Ogikubo's lost his touch. I'm sure Aoki got those whispers going. He never lets a good mm. crisis go to waste. Oh, really? Aoki knows it would destroy the party if it ever revealed their chair, Ogikubo, forged money for years. Now, Aoki can easily blackmail Ogikubo and force him to step down. Aoki will become the new party chair. I don't get it. Why does he want to take Ogikubo's place so bad? The party chair manages elections, so in that role, Aoki could nominate anyone he wants. Damn. He'll control the ruling party. Therefore, he'll control the nation. The whole country will be under his thumb? Yes. Especially if I'm right about his next move. I think he's gonna try to dissolve Parliament. <clears throat> this guy is doing the sneakiest shit. At a time like this, that's insane! Prime Minister, I understand how you must feel, being unable to rely on Ogi Kubo-sensei. But honestly, I have the power to support you better than he ever could. If an election were held today, I could guarantee you two-thirds of the seats. Minimum. Do you have a solid plan for doing that? Yes. I'll send Bleach Japan to the districts where the citizens' liberal party is weakest. Police Japan can influence votes anywhere. They're incredibly popular. Plus, they have my endorsement. A victory for the party would, of course, move your personal political goals forward. Oh. Tell me, do you think you have the power to maintain the party's stability right now? We don't want it breaking up for lack of support from Ogi Kubo Sensei. You can talk that way to the house, but not to me. Hmm. This Appoint is the me Prime Minister, right? And he's election. doing this to the Prime Minister? If you don't, I'll be forced to make public the nature of Ogi Kubo sensei's crimes. That would mean the end of not only your administration, but the party itself. But there's no precedent for someone serving as both governor and party chair. Besides, you're much too young. If age is what you want, start digging for some old fossil who can stop me. That is... If you think you can find one. Anyone in particular come to mind? <sighs> this guy. Quite a villain we got here. Political power. Aoki's scheme to destroy the Great Wall worked. Now he's got Mabuchi and the Omi at his command. So much power. Vested in just one man. And it had to be Masato Arakawa. Oh, the young master is the whole town in the palm of his hand. Blood is being spilled all because an outsider interfered. How could the Arakawa that wants you be part of that? Kasuga. I know you never intended to be at the center of all this. It was pure coincidence that you were there when the soap landowner died. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Yep. Lucky me. But one thing I don't believe is a coincidence is that you ended up in a gene show. Huh? Yeah, with a fake bill. What do you mean? Do you still have that fake bill? Y 
Yeah. Uh, didn't... Didn't you say you knew how it ended up on me? Yes. Only one person in the world could have put that bill in your pocket. Who? Who is it? Masumi Arakawa himself. Arakawa-san? No, I... I mean, exactly, He's the one who right? shot me. Yes, I'm aware He's, he shot He was you. once a skilled but assassin. did you ever consider that maybe he did that so you would end up here? What? That fake bill was his letter of introduction between you and me. It was to let me know that you were one of Masumi Arakawa's men. Uh, kind of a weird way to introduce yeah. us, don't you think? I think what it means is Arakawa's goals do not align with those of Ryo Aoki. Well, then, what are Arakawa's goals? I really can't say. But I do know that he means business. He wouldn't have used that bill if he didn't. Chairman, how exactly do you the know Arakawa? The first time we met, he pretended he doesn't know Arakawa. But now, in actuality, he does. Well, that's a long story. And there's a much better place than here to tell it. Aeon Tower. Aeon Tower? We're going back in there? Yes. That's where my fate intertwined with Arakawa's. <laughs> he sure seems to be partial to Pekin. Wait, is that duck. where his dad died? Yeah. Let's have it for lunch tomorrow. My treat. I'll make the reservation. It's finally the Peking Duck. That freaking pecking duck. Okay, we're back into the survive part. Okay, it looks like everybody else is already up, so. Listen. Be good to talk, Ichiban. After hearing what you said about Chairman Hoshino earlier, something I'm curious about. Huh? It on me then, I guess. Well, remember how it said it was a chance that you came to Eiji Chou? Okay. Yeah, something like that. Well, while you were bleeding out from the gunshot wound, I was working my ass off to find the tools to treat you. I doubt you remember. Nah, you know my gratitude is deeper than the oceans for that. Well, I think the part you want to know is the one who told me to treat you. It was none other than the chief. Mm -hmm. Huh? I mean, it was the middle of the night. I was asleep. Chief and a few guys came to see me in a panic, asked me to fix you up. Mm. Now that I think about it, why would I care? What's that supposed to mean? You don't need a motive to save a dying man, do you? If you were one of us, sure. I would have done it. No questions asked. But getting involved with a shot Yakuza? That's asking for trouble. If they really wanted to save you, why didn't they drop you off at a hospital? Or a call an ambulance? Huh. But the chief wanted to keep it in house. Right. But I think the chief must have had a reason he wanted to save you. A reason we still don't know. Yes, he might. I think it relates to what Chairman Hoshino was saying about you being here isn't just chance. Yo. Think there's more to the chief than we know? Well, every hobo has a secret or two is hiding. Hey. You got time. Before your pecking duck date, maybe talking with the chief would be a good idea. Yeah, I think so too. Oh, now we're outside. Okay. Yeah, let's go back inside for a little bit. And I think we can, like, what? Level up Nanba here. Hey, Nanba, what's up? Finally getting closer. Finally upgrade our bonds. You drinking, Nanba? Oh, Ichiban. I'm glad you're here. We need to talk. We do? Is it something serious? Yeah, is Look, it something serious? I need to tell you I'm sorry. For lying. You mean about chasing the counterfeit bill? Yeah. Think you of course, can forgive man. Me. Yeah. You know we're past that. What's important is your brother got released. All's well that ends well, right? That said, maybe now's a good time to tell me if there's any other holes in your story. You really were a nurse at some point, right? Well, of course I was a nurse. How else could I have brought you back from the brink of death? Good point. 
Then, what about the part where you sold hospital meds? Didn't you say that's how you got your nursing license revoked? Well, that's the short version, but it's more complicated, actually. There really is something with that. What do you mean? <sighs> You'll be the first person I've ever told this to, so... I hope you plan on sitting for a while. You know, I got yeah, all the time, man. man. I'm all ears. I'm all ears. Back in elementary school, I read about Florence Nightingale. That's when I knew I was meant to be a nurse. Helping the sick, people being grateful for it. It's all I ever wanted in life. But when I finally put on my scrubs, it was different. Endless late shifts, difficult patients, never a word of thanks. Eventually, I just stopped caring. Little by little, I started cutting corners any way I could. I'd pretend not to hear the intercom, and instead, I'd go doze off somewhere. By the time I hit 40, I had no idea why I ever went into the field. But then one day, this new girl named Mizue showed up. Oh. And in her introduction, she brought up who else but Nightingale. Just like you, huh? <laughs> we had the same role model, but she still had her spirit. She would rush toward every patient in the ward. Never missed a beat. On top of that, she always had the sweetest smile. So, you had a thing for her. <laughs> Are you kidding me? She was yeah. 23 <laughs> and a looker. And I was just a middle-aged loser. There's a huge age gap. Don't worry, you're younger than you look. Age is only a number. <laughs> I'll go for this one. So what? You totally look younger than you are. You, uh, you think so? For sure. If you told me you were in your 20s or, hell, your teens... That, that's taking it too far, Ichiban. God damn it, Ichiban. 30s is fine. <laughs> Sorry. That was a good one, though. You got me. Anyway, back to Mizue chat. What happened? No, oh, that's right. Whenever I saw her working, I could feel my old self coming back. Aww. That young version of me, who used to give it his all. Well, that's a good sign. If only I had half her stamina and wasn't twice her age. Anyway, one night I was a little sleepier than usual. So I went out to the back lawn, thinking maybe I could sneak in a nap. And suddenly, I heard a noise from behind. I turned around to find the storeroom we keep the medicine in wide open, and Mizue-chan was walking out alone. Was she restocking? I mean, if you were slacking off, she was probably having to bust her ass. Well, that's the thing. In our hospital, only the pharmacists have access to the storeroom. Oh. Mizue-chan and I were just nurses. We didn't even need to go in there. And then what was she doing? Well, at the time, there was a rumor floating around the hospital. Uh oh. Medicine would keep disappearing. The list never matched the inventory. She's taking stuff? According to the rumors, someone was swiping medicine and selling it. Illegally. No way. And that was Mizue chan? It was. As my eyes adjusted, I could clearly see her arms were full of medicine boxes. But why would she need to sell medicine? Yeah, why? From what I heard, her parents were under a mountain of debt. So, to lighten some of their load, Mizue-chan was paying everything she could. But a single nurse's salary wouldn't get them out of the hole. No way. So she was stealing the meds to do it? Yep. Yeah. And I was the sole eyewitness. Thing is, Mizue-chan never noticed me there. Now, if it was you, Ichiban, what would you have done? Well, calling her out on it would seem to be the right thing to do. But... I guess she wasn't stealing it just to be a criminal, huh? Not in the slightest. She was only doing it for her family. I mean, yeah, she was breaking the law. But she wasn't trying to hurt anyone. Plus, getting caught would cost her her job. Then the debt would only have gotten worse. With all that in mind, I'd say it's a pretty tough call to make. Huh. <laughs> now you're on the same page I was. True. Anyway, in the end... All I could do was watch her walk away without saying a word. If there ever was a criminal who deserved a free pass, it was Mizue-chan. That was what I thought at the time. So I turned a blind eye. Mm. And what happened after that? It wasn't long before Mizue-chan's actions caught up with her. 
The hospital director decided to get the police involved and started gathering evidence. He waited that long to take action? Well, he was trying to resolve it internally, being that the hospital's reputation was at stake. Okay. I guess he got That's sick sense. of having a thief under his nose, so he escalated it to the next logical step. But if the cops caught Mizuwe-chan stealing, that'd be bad news. She'd have a police record and her name in all the papers. To be honest, it was only a matter of time. She had her whole life ahead of her. Now, how could that happen to someone so young? Uh, and on the other hand, you've going. got me. A guy who totally burned out. A guy who couldn't be further from Florence Nightingale. Better a saint like Mizue-chan stay at the hospital than a sack of shit like me, wouldn't you say? Namba? Are you telling me you... Yeah. I went up and confessed to the whole thing. Stealing, selling, and all. And that's how you lost your nursing license? Yep. No, oh, and I got fired too. Naturally. Yeah, naturally. Man, you went all out for that girl. Did she ever contact you after that? Even a call or a letter? Not that I'm aware. In a matter of hours, I was out of a job and out on the streets. You regret any of it? Well, my brother disappeared not long after. So even if I didn't get canned, I would have quit on my own anyway. So, no, to answer your question. Though I do have to admit, I would like to see Mizue-chan off when she goes overseas. She's going overseas? Yeah. She's going? She always dreamed of running off to some developing country where they really need medical professionals. She took that Nightingale shit seriously. Our hospital had an international dispatch program, available to staff nurses with at least three years tenure. This year would be Mizue-chan's third, and I know she would take advantage of it. Well, in that case, why not go say farewell? Yeah, man. <laughs> if only I could. For starters, I don't even know when she leaves. Maybe if you ask one of your old nurse buddies, they'll tell you? Don't be ridiculous. I'm the little rat who stole the medicine, if you forgot that detail. They want nothing to do with me. Well, hello, boys. Don't worry, the life of the party's here. <laughs> Care to bring me up to speed? Oh, Sachan. Wait, are you drunk? <laughs> I think you're drunk. Uh, this is no. the first time we saw her okay. get drunk. If you please. Oh, Nama here was going on right, maybe on I just hobo forgot. horror stories again. Hobo? Horror stories? Well, no house means no toilet, right? Care to guess what he had to do when he had the shits? Yeah, I'd rather not. And here I was thinking I'd get actual substance out of two grown men instead of literal crap. <sighs> Thanks for covering for me. I got you, man. I don't mind if we let Sayako know at some point, but preferably not when she's plastered. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Right, I guess that would be the perfect time to end the episode right here. Thank you so much for watching Yakuza Like a Dragon. And I think we have plenty of things that we would want to know from here on out. Actually, I'm very curious by a lot of things right now. But uh, we'll reserve that for next time. And I'll be seeing you on the next episode. Bye!